Imagine the intriguing scenario of embarking on an excavation within an early royal necropolis. Picture stumbling upon an awe-inspiring sight, a massive, intricately crafted basalt sarcophagus that bears a striking resemblance to the god Osiris. This remarkable discovery takes us back to the year 1898 and places us at Umm el Kaab in Abydos, where Emile Anilino and his team are at the helm of an important archaeological expedition. Emile Anilino, a figure with a unique background in the French Catholic Church, embarked on an unexpected journey into the realm of archaeology. This unconventional start laid the foundation for his later pursuits, where his experiences in religious contexts might have shaped his perspectives and approaches to uncovering ancient history. However, the era in which Amelino conducted his work was marked by limited knowledge about the history and culture of ancient Egypt, casting a shadow of uncertainty over many archaeological findings. The discovery that emerged as a focal point of Amelino's career was a massive, intricately crafted basalt sarcophagus that bore a striking resemblance to the deity Osiris. Despite the scarcity of comprehensive historical information, Amalino became strongly convinced that this significant find was nothing short of the final resting place of the god himself. This conviction might have been driven by a combination of factors, including the grandeur of the discovery and the allure of connecting with a prominent deity from Egyptian mythology. In a time when access to comprehensive historical records was limited, the allure of such a monumental discovery could have overshadowed Amalino's discernment, leading to his bold assertion that the tomb belonged to Osiris. The commencement of Emile Amalino's archaeological endeavor marked the beginning of a significant chapter in the exploration of ancient history. However, his approach to excavation was characterized by a blend of limited skills and a somewhat haphazard methodology. This unique blend of qualities shaped the initial phases of his work, impacting the trajectory of his findings. Amelino's limited archaeological skills might have stemmed from his unconventional background, and these limitations were evident in the manner in which he conducted his excavations. Rather than adopting a systematic and meticulous approach, Amelino seemed to favor a more haphazard method, resulting in the unintentional disregard of artifacts that held valuable historical insights. This approach, while driven by a desire to focus on intact items, risked missing significant details that could have contributed to a more comprehensive understanding of the site. His selection of intact items over fragmented ones could have been influenced by a desire to present the most visually compelling and complete artifacts, adding to the allure of his discoveries. However, this method often led to the exclusion of crucial context and information that could have provided a clearer picture of the historical and cultural significance of the site. Amid these methodological choices, Amelino made a bold and sweeping announcement about the discovery, declaring that the tomb he was excavating belonged to none other than the revered god Osiris. This announcement marked a pivotal moment in the excavation and set the stage for subsequent investigations. It demonstrated his conviction and enthusiasm for his findings, even as doubts began to emerge from the wider archaeological community. As the initial excitement of Emile Amalino's discovery began to settle, a series of contradictions and doubts emerged, casting a shadow over his bold assertion. One notable contradiction arose from the discovery of a skull that Amalino believed belonged to Osiris, only to later learn that it belonged to a woman. This finding presented a challenge to his hypothesis, raising questions about the accuracy of his initial interpretation and the basis of his conviction. Strangely, despite this contradiction, Amelino maintained his belief in the face of skepticism. This steadfast adherence to his original assertion, despite contradictory evidence, underscored the complex interplay between personal beliefs and archaeological inquiry. It also highlighted the potential pitfalls of allowing preconceived notions to overshadow emerging findings. The wider archaeological community, including respected figures like Flinders Petrie, voiced skepticism about Amelino's claims. Petrie's eagerness to conduct his own investigation signaled a growing sentiment of doubt regarding the validity of the initial discovery. This skepticism was a natural response within the field of archaeology, where claims are subjected to rigorous scrutiny and require substantial evidence for acceptance. 
The presence of contradictions and skepticism paved the way for further investigations and prompted a re-evaluation of Amalino's findings. The initial excitement and bold assertions gave way to a more critical examination of the evidence, driven by a commitment to uncovering the truth and avoiding the pitfalls of premature conclusions. Ultimately, this phase of questioning and skepticism played a crucial role in shaping the trajectory of the excavation and contributed to a more comprehensive understanding of the site's historical significance. In the wake of increasing skepticism and contradictions surrounding Emile Amelino's assertions, a significant turning point arrived with the appointment of Gaston Maspero and the subsequent involvement of Flinders Petrie. Petrie's reputation as a meticulous archaeologist preceded him, and he was granted the opportunity to re-excavate the site that had been the epicenter of Amalino's discovery. Petrie's re-excavation marked a pivotal phase in the exploration of the tomb, characterized by methodical precision and meticulous attention to detail. This approach stood in stark contrast to the haphazard methodology that had characterized Amalino's initial work. Petrie's commitment to systematic excavation and careful documentation set the stage for a comprehensive re-evaluation of the site's artifacts and historical context. Through his careful examination, Petrie unearthed a wealth of critical findings that had been overlooked in the initial excavation. His approach to interpreting these artifacts was marked by rigor and diligence, aiming to correct the misconceptions that had arisen from Amalino's work. Petrie's detailed explanations and contextual insights provided a corrective lens through which the true identity and significance of the tomb could be understood. The culmination of Petrie's re-excavation efforts resulted in a corrected understanding of the site. The initial assertion that the tomb belonged to Osiris was replaced with a more accurate identification. The tomb was conclusively identified as the final resting place of King Jur, the third king of the First Dynasty. This correction was not merely an adjustment of historical labels. It represented a significant shift in our understanding of ancient Egyptian history and the roles played by these prominent figures. The journey of Emile Amelino's discovery took an unexpected turn as Flinders Petrie's re-excavation unveiled a truth that reshaped the narrative surrounding the tomb's identity. The initial belief that the tomb belonged to the god Osiris was now replaced by a more accurate understanding grounded in meticulous examination and reinterpretation of the evidence. Through Flinders Petrie's systematic approach, it became increasingly evident that the tomb held a different historical significance than originally thought. Petrie's careful documentation of artifacts and their contexts enabled him to reconstruct the historical puzzle with greater accuracy. The tomb that had been associated with Osiris was conclusively identified as the final resting place of King Jur, the third king of the First Dynasty. This re-identification was not a mere correction of labels, but a profound shift in our understanding of the tomb's purpose and the historical figures associated with it. The tomb that had been earlier believed to be the resting place of Horus and Seth was similarly reassessed. Through Petrie's meticulous work, this tomb was definitively identified as the tomb of Kaskimwi, a ruler from the Second Dynasty. The process of re-identification involved a detailed analysis of artifacts, inscriptions, and architectural elements, creating a coherent narrative that aligned with known historical records. Flinders Petrie's correction of the tomb's identity was accompanied by a deeper exploration into the lives and reigns of these ancient Egyptian rulers. The meticulous interpretation of inscriptions and artifacts revealed insights into the political, cultural, and religious aspects of their eras. As a result, the tomb transformed from a potential mythological shrine to a window into the lives of historical figures who had once held significant influence. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery and re-evaluation. The tale of Emile Amalino's initial findings and Flinders Petrie's meticulous re-excavation illustrates the evolving nature of archaeology and the power of evidence-based exploration. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating stories from history and beyond. Until next time, keep exploring and questioning.